me, mister, do you have the time? Are you so important to stand still for you? Excuse me, mister, lend me your ear. Are you not only blind, but are thank you, you uh, scared to hear? Thank you very much hear? for asking me to get involved in your interview blog. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be asked by you. Uh, I've got a um okay so let's get started uh about the kinder site well let's talk about before i actually got involved with the kinder site uh or making the kinder site i was actually a high-tech consultant uh, involved in the dot-com boom and i advised quite a lot of companies on their strategy and the ideas and even finished up advising government ministries on some of their uh parliamentary uh, policies on various areas of high-tech um and I had a couple of internet startups as well uh, but that all sort of went by the by when the dot-com boom sort of collapsed on its uh, knees I think that's the right phrase um, and at that sort of time I also started having my children and I very much wanted to bring them up bilingually and that's really where the kinder site came along because I was looking for good content uh, that I could use with my children when they were about two three years old this was um, good digital games and it was so difficult to find anything that was any good that I thought would engage them and motivate them and act as another uh, area for them to have English content and also of course use computers and be familiar with computers um, so I started finding content and sort of bringing it home and then I suddenly thought well if I need it lots of people need it so that's how I sort of got involved in creating the kinder site and I had a bit of help from uh, some technical people who uh, helped put it together or whatever and uh, but to be perfectly honest since I got involved in the European projects I've really sort of let that slip to be honest and I really could do with some help help from people to sort of help me sort of put this back on the road and make it into the site that it should be and you know with the input that it needs and I think, you know, I'd love to do that as a group of people rather than just sort of trying to leave that on my own. So, help, as I say. Yes, so, uh, as you say, the Kinder side actually was the root and the reason that I got involved in the European projects. And, you know, when the Kindersight was launched, it had an in, almost immediately, it had a very large uh, usership, and I sort of had all sorts of people writing to me, God knows from where, from all over the globe, uh, about the site and about the ideas and using the site, and I sort of quickly sort of felt that this is going to lead somewhere. I haven't got a clue where, but somewhere. And one day I get an email from. Which I believe Lecce, the municipality of Lecce in southern Italy, who invited me to get involved in a European funded project. So off I went to that, not having a clue what was it all about. <laughs> and uh, But I soon sort of got my feet under the table and very quickly realized that this was a very interesting and uh, a very useful program, this European lifelong learning program, to actually get involved in. Uh, I sort of got in touch with my national agency in the UK, a very nice guy uh, at uh, the British Council who was running the uh, UK national agency. Each country has a national agency. And he actually uh, advised me and helped me get uh, go off to what they in those days was called a contact seminar, which was in Prague. I've never been to Prague before, uh, where I met some of the administrators of the lifelong learning program in those days it was actually called the Socrates program and I sort of sat down with a great guy uh, from the EU Commission called uh, William Atchison who unfortunately is no longer involved in this area of the lifelong pro uh, learning program and he was extremely helpful in advising me where and what I could do within the program Now, um, 
as you say, I don't want to go into too deeply in the Lifelong Learning Program and the projects that I've been involved in, but I, I will mention just two for now. And one is actually called uh, A Planet, which actually stands for, they, we always use these little acronyms for sort of long involved names. And A Planet actually stands for Autonomous uh, Personal Learning Networks for Language Educators. So you can see why we use this acronym, A Planet. And uh, this actually came about through um, a conference, I online conference I did. I did the virtual round table. And on that conference, I met Shelley Terrell, who I'm sure many of you have heard of. And uh, we actually had a quick meeting afterwards. I wanted to know how to use Twitter. And she sort of literally handheld, mentored me into Twitter. About an hour later, I realized there was a European project here. So I got back to Shelley, who's a great open welcoming person and um, gave her the idea she thought it was really great and I said well who do you think from the world of English language teaching and the sort of the blogs and Twitter community could be involved in that and she gave me Virgil Akiol who's actually now the coordinator from the Estate Foundation and Graham Stanley and Marissa Constantinadis and then I brought in sort of my networks from the European programs and sort of wrote the proposal which is about 80 90 pages long god knows how I did it and uh, and of course that got funded and is now the a planet project and it's an amazing project we're working you know it's so much fun to work with these people in this project you know and I think this goes through to the community of people who are getting involved with the project and uh, are now beginning to form a community on a Ning and I'll put the links into these uh, different sites afterwards I'll send it to you on uh, email to you. and uh, this is a really great project if you're a language educator if you're not experienced or experienced this is for you it really is yeah other projects yes well th there's another one which actually is a bit up your street uh, to you, as you know is uh, CLIL content language integrated learning um, now I'm not a pedagogist so I'm not an expert on this so you must probably know well you know a lot more about it than I do the basic idea of CLIL is that you learn a foreign language not in a dedicated language lesson but actually in other subjects so for example you may be doing sport and you're a Spanish kid and you'll learn all those instructions in French or in German or English or whatever and the same with other subjects, math, sciences, you learn them in your target language. This is quite a revolution, obviously there's a lot of barriers to it. And also there's a lot of missing content, which is in a sense what Chu, uh, you're doing such a great job in building so much content in this area. And the idea of our project, which is actually called eClil, uh, is we're also trying to create resources and ideas to help with CLIL language learning and uh, we're making games and we're building a resource center and um, <clears throat> uh, 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 to actually again to add to the uh, volume of uh, resources that are available for CLIL language learning. Uh, other projects well yeah uh, I'm actually at the moment working on about six projects uh, which includes Eclil and, and uh, a planet um, but I've actually I, I lost count actually uh, we, they have calls for the lifelong learning program every March February and uh, in the last call I had about I lo as I say lost count 10 or 11 new proposals I'm not going to talk about those proposals because very often what happens if we don't get funded then we'll try again we'll rebuild and take some advice and rethink what we're doing so we keep these ideas to ourselves at this stage um, I, uh, what is my favorite what of my existing projects yeah okay well I think well yes my favorite is actually one which believe it or not does not include technology but it's a project that's extremely dear to my heart because it's about children's books and it's a project called Eurolib uh, which is actually again one of these great big long names which is the European Children's Illustrated Travelling Language Library <laughs> sort of sums it up a bit and it's a, a real library of 36 books in six different languages 
that travels from school to school across Europe. And the children have the library, the school has the library for about ten, a week, ten days. And uh, during those days, they do pedagogic tasks that we have already designed and we've already piloted and have been incredibly successful. And they use the books as the basis to do tasks on culture, on languages, and on literacy. And it's a wonderful project and it works beautifully. And we're now looking and we are expanding the project into literally everywhere all over the globe. Uh, any group of teachers or school or authority can literally for about I think it's about four or five hundred euro can create a euro lib in their own area. What they've got to do is contact us and we will tell them how. So yeah, that's my favourite project today. <laughs> Though I do love the other ones as well because they're really stimulating, exciting things to do. Um, you ask um, why some teachers don't use the social networks. I think there's many reasons um, and two of them I've actually tried to answer this week with a blog post. I was a guest blogger in Shelley Terrell's uh, blog Teacher, Re Teacher Reboot Camp uh, where I sort of looked at the two of the main barriers people put up which is time and privacy and I'm not going to answer those questions right now. Um, because you know I've written a blog on it so you might as well go to the blog and again I'll give you the link to that. What do I do in my spare time? Well I'm actually extremely guilty because uh, apart from sort of being with my kids uh, I don't actually do a lot outside of uh, for myself in my spare time. Obviously I read all the time. Um, by the way, and obviously that was my one of my members of my family who just came in the background there. She didn't know I was doing this. Um, uh, so I think that answers that. And what, uh, what do I treasure at this point in my life? I think I'm like most people. It's got to be family. Uh, it's family, family, and family. And my work is sort of cream on that cake. And that's it. What's my next goal in life? Um, I'd like to do more outside of the projects as well. I love doing the projects because they're so innovative, uh, very cutting edge, interesting uses of technology, interesting people that I work with, in fact, remarkable people that I work with. Um, but I would like to sort of expand further. I'd like to sort of try and push outside of the world that we're in at the moment and do what I'm doing now further out. So uh, that's it. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to do this interview too and uh, good luck with uh, everything that you do as well. Thanks.